Hey, and welcome. So I'm Corey, and what I've got going on today is a bunch of fabric and paper staining. So here I've got an old sheet. This is just a bunch of cut up uh, cotton fabric here. So I'll be doing some of that. And then I've got a lot of this uh, cheesecloth happening. And then each one of these little cups has a piece of cheesecloth in it and a bunch of crumpled up tissue paper. And I, I've had these cups for a really long time from the Dollar Tree, so I figured they'd be really good for this. Now here I've got some canvas material scraps that I cut off of a bunch of pieces of my artwork from my exhibit back in August, and those are left over from that. And then I also have a bunch of crumpled up rice paper. So I've got another one of these. I love to work out of these. This is a kitty litter container from Walmart and they work perfect to contain your mess. So this is just another cup full of all the goodies. And then what I've got here, these are my leftover writ dyes from eco dyeing over the summertime. And I've got royal blue, lemon yellow, dark brown, which the dark brown on paper really comes out a lot more red than it does brown, just so you know, and then charcoal gray. So I'm going to be using those to spray some of these. And then I have some water based sprays as well here. I've got Delusions, Black Marble. I have a bunch of sprays that I've had for a long time and I'm really wanting to use them up and get a bunch of, uh, you know, this is such prep work for collage. I'm doing all of these so that we'll have plenty of material to work with in 2022 because I plan on doing a lot of collage. And that this is Radiant Rain Shimmering Mist by Luminart. I really don't care about spray brands. Uh, this is Walnut Ink Spray and then I've got some Distress. But um, you know, I, I love them all. I shouldn't say I don't care. What I should say is no matter who makes it or what kind of a spray it is, I love it. So I'm not picky about the brand. Is It's better said that way. Here's this little cornflower walnut ink antiquing solution. And this is by Sukanico. Um, but these I've had for a really long time. So just use what you have on hand by all means. Here's some Adirondack Sunset Orange. And I have a bunch of Lindy's sprays too, but I just decided to stick with more matte sprays for this little thing I'm doing today. And then here I've got Vibrant Turquoise by Dilutions. Now these I found at this store called Tuesday Morning and it's called smooch spritz and I've got a gold color here and a copper color and these are very shimmery. My plan here is literally to just squirt. Let's do some royal blue. Should have had these more ready. Oh that's holding its color. And I'm just going to leave all these in the cups for at probably a couple days. And then I'm going to come back and show you. So here I'm just using a long paintbrush handle. Let's go ahead and add some charcoal gray to this. This is kind of fun. It's very messy, so you want to really prepare for the mess ahead of time. And let's just add them all into this one. Here's some dark brown spray. There we go. Oh, it looks so beautiful. I really would love for this to come out brown. That would be my wish and my goal. So as you can see, as I'm stirring this around in here, these are not taking all the color. So you really want to kind of mix them up good and give them a really good spray just to get that color soaked all the way in. And now that I've got these down in here and they're taking up a lot less space, 
This is really strange. This lemon, this is supposed to be lemon yellow and it's coming out blue. I think what happened was is I probably mismarked this <laughs> or I used up the lemon yellow and poured something else in without changing the label. Ah, it happens. It's how things work in my world. So we're going to be doing a lot of collage coming up. See, even with all of that, that is still showing white and some white is going to be good and beautiful but the less white the better i really do want these saturated so look at how that started out filling the whole cup and now they're so smushed down in there that uh it's really going to work out great so now here's a piece of rice paper Here's some of these little scraps in here, so I'm going to go ahead and spray some more. So here we are at this stage and I have let these sit for just around five days. Um, I got busy with other projects so you don't have to wait as long as I did. That's just how it worked out for me. So let's go ahead and take a peek. Now with this piece of fabric being kind of faded like it is, I can always come in and do a bit more dye or uh, some coffee staining would look really nice on this. I love this here, but I'm not too excited about all of this peach. I wanted to point out real quick, so I've been sitting here pulling all this apart, and this tissue paper is really fragile. So what I found is you are gonna get some tears no matter what, but what I found is if you just pull a little at a time, and then if you start feel it start to tear, just back off of that area and move to a different area. And then sometimes you'll be pulling like that and it'll want to tear on you. Just turn it over and try to grab it from a different direction. And it'll just keep it from tearing, but it's fine if it tears. You just kind of want to get as big a pieces as you can. So I found that to be a little bit tricky and wanted to show you real quick how to handle it. Whew, I finally got everything ironed and pulled apart. So let's go ahead and go through this stuff. I got some great pieces of cheesecloth. And what I do with this, I just have a little 
plastic style mason jar that I got at Michael's. They have these and I'm just going to be popping all these in here and then I keep them very close to my workbench so that I can just grab them and they're at the ready. I've got some really nice brown and green up here and some gray. These are just going to work so well for all the collage stuff that's coming up. I got a few more here. So you can get a lot of um, collage supplies in a hurry if you do a big batch like this. You do have to wait. You know, I like to wait a few days and projects like this are fun because you can just put all your bundles together, spray them, dye them, whatever you're going to do. And then um, you got a gigantic batch so you don't have to keep doing it you know, for every project. You can just pull from what you have. Now I love this linen one here. This is probably my favorite. I really love the way this came out. And in the future, because I didn't write anything down, I found that I scan a lot of my artwork. But what I find is that uh, when I'm scanning all the time and writing colors down and things like that, that I miss the organicness of creating the artwork. So all of these are, I couldn't tell you exactly the combo and you know, just pick what you think you're gonna like and go for it. It's a very organic process. Here's a bunch of these pieces of canvas and this here is perfectly okay that it did not catch all, all the stains and dyes because stuff like this can be painted. You can restain it. There's all kinds of things that we're going to be doing with this stuff in the future. So I'll show you exactly what I mean, but you get it. Let me shove these all in here real quick. So I have a really nice little stash of cheesecloth now and I don't worry about them blending or any of that stuff because you can always throw some paint on it. So let's do the fabric here. I got such a gigantic pile to work with now. Now this piece here has quite a bit of pink. And I'm happy to say it's the only one. There is a Tim Holtz spray and I really want to, I think it's the Vintage Photo Distress Spray that turns out pink sometimes. And you know, I'm not a huge fan of pink, but I can dial this back with gesso and linen colored paint. So it's not going to be a problem. I'm glad that there's not a whole lot of this in here, but look at all the beautiful wispy color in there. It's quite lovely. So, and then whatever parts you don't like, you just paint over. This piece here, let's do one at a time. This, I really really like this piece a lot. It's got some rust color and black and some really bold kind of dark dark yellow and then lighter yellow. I just love the grunge vibe of this piece and a few of these I'm definitely going to be using for journal covers but we'll be using a lot of this for collage as well. I'm very excited about next year the soul of an artist series and i hope you come and join me for that so here's some nice blue and if you don't like the white just take extra care to uh, stain all of your stuff and you kind of have to pull it apart which is why i have some white because it's i am going to tell you guys this is an involved little project i probably spent a couple hours on all of these little bundles here but i have really a gigantic stash now so it was worth it to me but you can really spend a lot of time doing this and 
you know, you can speed it up a lot by just knowing that you can cover whatever you don't like with paint. <laughs> That's always my solution. If I don't like it, I'll cover it with paint or collage or whatever. Some really nice pieces with beautiful little magical color all woven through here. Just so, I, I really like doing this. And the nice thing about this is you can do it in the winter. So here's another one with quite a bit of pink, but I love the pink against the brown and I can always dial back whatever is too bright. So it's really not a problem. It's not my favorite and I definitely didn't use any pink sprays in this, but alas, there it is. And you know, this is funny because this is totally reminds me of Susan Taylor Brown. This is such her style of stuff and she does a ton of stuff like this as a lot of you know. And if you don't know, check out her channel. It's Susan Taylor Brown. But uh, this just reminds me of her. I love her work and um, I'm very much inspired by the stuff she creates. Now this piece here is just really nice. I love the earth tones. You know me. <laughs> the more bland and plain, the more I like it. This one's got, this one looks a little faded and old, so it's beautiful, but it's also a really good candidate for some paint and stamping and stuff like that, but really nice size for a journal cover. This almost looks like some kind of mystical butterfly wings. And then I like all these lines. This is what the creased fabric is so good at giving you. So fun. Now let's talk sprays and dyes for a minute. I really do prefer dye. And the reason why is because the sprays are water activated and they're they're messy after the fact, you know? I like to, I don't mind making a mess, but I also like to have my fabric and uh, my stuff hold on to its color and not have it rubbing off on people's hands and things like that. And the sprays are so beautiful, but they really need to be sealed. Like on um, paper, you can seal it with your jelly plate and some matte medium, but fabric is a little tougher. You could even do that process with fabric, but it is going to leave a film and I'm not sure it would work all that well. So I do tend to prefer dyes that you know there's nothing like the shimmer sprays and all that stuff like the Lindy's but um, paper is a far better substrate for it you know I mean these are beautiful and they'll last a long time but some of this will rub off on people's hands as they handle it some of the shimmer and all that so it's just something to be aware of I really love this piece of fabric here. I think it's so beautiful with all the markings in it. I like how this one came out a lot. This is one of those things, you know, I do a lot of prep, art prep work with the kind of artwork I do. And a lot of artists do this kind of thing as they go. And it, there's wisdom in both ways because you can customize it a little better if you make the piece as you're going. But um, like these, I had to wait for all of this to dry. So the advantage to doing a gigantic, um, prep session is you're doing other things, you're creating other art, you're living your life and getting, taking care of all your stuff while this is drying and turning into these magical pieces for you to use. So I do though want to warn against because it happens to me, look at this beautiful veining from the fabric being creased. 
I love this so much. Um, but you really want to keep those things in mind because it can, it can, you know, be a problem for you, you know, having stuff rub off. I'm not a big fan of that. So this piece is just kind of blah, meh, but it can be painted and it can be cut up and torn up. And that's the beauty of this. So if you do get some white, it's okay. There's always a way to cover it. So this one's a little bit brighter. This is the last piece of fabric. I really love these little parts here. Imagine this, like just this little section right here on a piece of collaged artwork. Really pretty. Very nice. And the nice thing about this fabric is you can scan this if you want to. So if you've got pieces, I would recommend putting a piece of printer paper over top of your fabric so that you can clean the glass that you're scanning because of these sprays. This is what a pain the sprays can be. Um, because if you let it touch that top, film on your printer, you run the risk of it staining it. And what if it doesn't come all the way off? You know what I mean? So those are some of the reasons I just don't like the sprays. Here's just a few scrap pieces of the paper. Now the paper I think came out really beautiful and I have a gigantic pile of it. This is by far, I think, one of my absolute favorite pages here. And this is the rice paper. It's much more durable um, than the tissue paper. And it was much easier to pull apart. So if you want to make these, but you really want to take it easy on yourself and um, kind of have a low maintenance session, just take out the tissue paper because it really, this is tissue, a piece of tissue paper here, and it's so much more delicate, and it takes, you know, more care and a gentler hand, but it, you really do get beautiful paper out of both. So I'm just gonna whip through these here, but they are lovely. And like this, of course, your paper is always, you're gonna have tears with the tissue. It's like impossible to avoid. I want to set this one aside because we're going to do something really quick with that that I think you're just going to love so much. Here's another piece of the rice paper and you get a little tiny bit of a different, not really, I guess it's pretty much the same on both sides, but oh, such good collage paper. Now this, I love this rusty, grungy, gorgeous paper. This is some of my favorite. This has a ton of gold shimmer in it. I hope you can see that. It's quite something. Having this on a white background really does um, let all the colors come through too. And so you can really see what's happening with that paper. So this is really lovely with these spatters of ink or whatever that ended up being. And it's, it is a tiny bit different, but so much to choose from and you can just tear chunks off and go for it. So here's a really nice piece for some drama and some contrast in a piece of artwork. I don't have the best setup for showing you. It's kind of tricky. It's getting a little hectic. I like these green and black. This one's really pretty. I like that a lot. Here's some more of that. This can't be fun with me doing that. I'm gonna quit doing that. That's probably really bothersome. Here's some gray and a little bit of black on this one. I really love the gray. I am a huge fan of gray. I know it's kind of, it's not everybody's favorite color, but it's, I just love neutral. <laughs> And gray is like next to beige. Gray is one of the most neutral colors you can have. This one has a lot more pizzazz in it. 
some purples in here and some green, black, quite mystical looking. Oh, I hope this flip is okay for you guys. Here, this is that lovely linen tissue paper that goes along with that linen cheesecloth. And it's got some blue spatters on it, which is perfectly fine. Yeah, I'm so glad I did this and I'm so glad I have these. And I will just kind of fold these over themselves and store them in a Tupperware. I like to store most of my stuff these days in either the plastic envelopes or Tupperwares so that I can see through and grab what I want quickly and easily. I'm somebody who's struggled to be organized my entire life and I've gotten better and better with it. So that's a good thing. This is all from the same batch here. This one has a lot of blue shimmer on it. Really, you can just come up with the loveliest papers. There's so much here. Here's another little scrap piece. <laughs> there is an awful lot here. It really is a gigantic batch. And I have a tendency to kind of do that. I can get myself in trouble. I can be more concerned with making stuff to create with than actually creating. So, you know, if you're like that, being aware of that fact, it just helps me. It's like, okay, you're getting carried away in the making process and the artwork is not getting created. So, you know, that's something that I think about quite often. And it's helped me to get better. But as you can see, I'm definitely not cured. <laughs> I've got a lot of papers here. Just beautiful. Lots of beautiful blues. Here's the rice. And then when you spread this out. Now, I would not. I, uh, you could iron the tissue. If you put it between um, printer paper, you would be fine. I would try it that way. I don't think I'll waste any time on the tissue paper. But this piece right here really shows the detail when you pull it smooth. So these rice pages might be worth doing and I would absolutely use a couple pieces of printer paper with them too. These are all kind of uh, black and gray and blue. And here's one that missed. It's quite lovely though. Now this is some of my favorite coming up here. This is some, I like these colors. I love the rusty, really grungy style colors. And these do not disappoint. When I pulled these out, I was so excited. And this is another art form where it's like Christmas. You get to open all your little paper presents. <laughs> I love this kind of stuff. I just love to open them up. Look at that bright orange against that really bold bluish gray. I, li I like that combo. I would definitely knock that back a bit. This is a little bit more um, subtle here, this piece. And then this one's got a lot of gray in it, which I really like. Uh, gray and gold and gray and orange are really an acquired taste. I couldn't stand those combos when I first saw them and now I love them. It's just one of those things I caught the bug and now I'm in love with it and you know how it is. I've got a nice flat brush here and then some rich black chalk home decor paint and Anita's metallic classic gold paint. And I just went ahead and squirted the tiniest bit on my used palette plate here. And what you want to do is load your brush on both sides 
but you want to be, you don't want any blobs on your brush. You kind of want it pretty dry. And then you can just simply gently run over your paper. Just makes for some lovely accented paper and it really can give your paper a look of elegance that it didn't have before and it's very quick and easy way to bring out the contrast. So yeah, I would say make some of these up for yourself and come on back and we're going to be doing all different kinds of artwork coming up and exploring a lot of different ways to use these kinds of pages in our artwork. So thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you real soon. Have a great day.